So, during the live stream, I asked a question about playing as Commander Valen to experience a different side of Doom in the future. To experience the Sentinel and Argental lore, because I love the aesthetic and there is so much potential in the lore to explore, that I honestly believe people just overlook it. So I asked that question to see what the game director really thinks about the idea, and, well, here it is. Man, there's a lot of, like, uh, interesting questions about different sides of different stories for different Doom games. So this question's coming from Anvil Gaming. The question is, what are your thoughts on doing, or going through Commander Valon's story for the next Doom game? They thought it should be a great way to see and experience the Sentinel lore slash culture. Well, why not? I mean, that's like the Clone Wars period of Doom, so why not from Doom Guy's perspective when he was like a, you know, I mean, he, the, I don't know, the, like, do you want to not play something other than Doom Guy? True, true, true. That's a good, uh, asked, that's a good point. And, and he should answer that. Like, what? what yeah, are you Anvil Gaming. Let's hear you. Let's hear all of you. I have been called. I must answer. Always. Now, because of the character limit of, I think, 200 characters in the Twitch chat, my question was not really clear as it should have been. So I decided, you know what, to best answer his question, and to really sell the idea that this has a lot of potential, I thought, well, it's best if I just make a video on this. So, Hugo, let me directly answer a few of your questions, and then I'll go into detail as to how exactly you can introduce Valen's story in the next game. Why not? I mean, that's like the Clone Wars period of Doom, so why not from Doom Guy's perspective, when he was like a... So you say it's like the Clone Wars story, so why not experience it from Doom Guy's perspective? Well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's so much wealth of lore before the arrival of the Doom Slayer, or Doom Guy, and it has so much potential, like the beginning of the Wraiths, uh, you know, the Cosmic Spear piercing through Argentinur, and then you have the rise of the Ancestrals. And then obviously the very first creation of life itself after the Ancestrals, which is where the Wraiths created the people of Argenta through magic of their breaths. It's surprising how people don't see the significance of this. The Wraiths could very well be gods. I mean, they have the power to create life, uh, or sentient life anyway. They could even be stronger than the Dark Lord because... The Dark Lord needed technology to make his creations, or, you know, to find a solution to immortality, while the Wraiths have magic at their disposal, which is, again, quite a significant deal. And if you're someone who's a fan of, you know, comics like Marvel Comics and DC Comics, I mean, you know the significance of magic when it comes to uh, just, you know, general stories, so there's just a lot of it potential to explore in this one. Secondly, I'll stick with this Clone Wars example. Now in the show, there are two characters that are the most significant part of the show. Obi-Wan and Anakin. The show is not just about one character, and it's about the awesome sort of brotherly relationship that they both have where Obi-Wan, with his incredible sassiness, but overall being calm and wise, and Anakin with his quips, but also, you know, occasionally losing his temper. Who's to say that Valen can't have a similar relation with Doomguy? I mean, Commander Valen trained Doomguy into what he is today, and if you look at both of them at their base level, Valen was far stronger and wiser than Doom Guy, while Doom Guy had, or still has, a relentless willpower and also has the anger issues uh, against the demons to really push his will against any obstacle. Now, just to confirm, 
I said Doom Guy, not Doom Slayer. So, Valen and Doom Guy are very similar with regards to Obi Wan and Anakin, respectively. So, you know, that is something that can be explored. I mean, we know that the Doom Slayer was once a king of Argent Denur. Who's to say that Valen wasn't his advisor? I mean, he is a commander overall. He trained Doom Guy into his position that he is. I mean, of course, Doom Slayer put his own effort in there, but, you know, we still have to uh, acknowledge the fact that Valen led him to that path. So who's to say that Valen, you know, isn't sort of the, uh, the wise part of him, where the Slayer is the strength part of, you know, uh, who he is. Just, you know, something to think about. I don't know, like, do you want to not play something other than Doom Guy? True, true, true. So you say, you know, do you want to play as someone other than Doom Guy? I mean, isn't that what you do in battle mode anyway? I mean, uh, when battle mode was available, I mean, did you see the amount of people that played the Marauder? You could not go a day without seeing multiple, you know, Slayer versus double Marauder uh, encounters. I mean, it was just common. So... I mean, personally, hell yes, I would love to be able to play a different character and experience the story from a different point of view. Uh, I mean, we know from the lore that Doom Guy was always focused on the destruction of the demons, whereas Commander Valen, along with King Novik, saw the vast potential of the Doomslayer, while at the same time, everyone else in the Night Sentinels and Argent Denur was against Doom Guy because he was an outsider. He went through the Colosseum. I mean, he was basically, uh, you know, a captive. And that's pretty much what happens to people that are captives or either if they're criminals. They're put into the Colosseum to prove themselves. And if once they are proven worthy, then they are then put onto the front lines as sort of the, uh, the fodder uh, night sentinels on the front lines. Sort of like the Suicide Squad, you know, the villains going against the villains. That's sort of how I saw it. And, you know, it's also one of the reasons why I think many people would love to play as the Marauder in some sort of story campaign. You know, to be able to see the perspective of the Maker-aligned Sentinels. And, I mean, first of all, why did they align with the Makers? Were they given some sort of promise that they really wanted? I mean... Yes, they were given a promise of eternal life after they died in Erdak, but I mean, we all know that was a lie from uh, from the Khan Maker. But what other motivation did they have? Well, we know that those Marauders or those Maker Aligned Sentinels despised the Slayer. They never saw the Slayer as their king. And so now they were being given the power to go up against the Slayer and to take him out. Laboratory. I think that would be a very compelling sort of story to go through and you can do that by you know uh you know seeing the marauder resurrected through the divinity machine and then told to hunt the slayer these marauders can go toe to toe with the slayer that reason alone is why the marauder deserves respect not only from a gameplay perspective but also lore wise but on that, on that same vein, or in the same lane, it'd be great to see the creation of Argenta and seeing their culture and lore come to fruition, or, you know, into manifestation. Like seeing the first king of the Argenta race. I think his name is King Omeron, or King Ormeron, I think. I can't remember right now. 
and then you know you can fast travel a few years to Commander Valen. It'd be amazing to see the you know the struggles for him to go through to become a commander of the Night Sentinel Army. And I know, uh, as I've said in my previous videos, Night Sentinel's hierarchy is based off of strength. The strongest will rule. So to become a commander, Valen had to be incredibly strong and incredibly skilled. That's why I said earlier that if Doom Guy and Valen was to go against each other, if they were, were to fight against each other, Valen would win because he is his strength and his knowledge is basically on another level. Uh, whereas Doom Guy needed more training to become the weapon that he is, uh, effectively. It would also be amazing to see the tragic part of Valen's story where he loses his son in one of the invasions of hell. I mean, we know that from the lore. And then he was subjected to visions of his son's tortured existence in the afterlife uh, by the, uh, the hell priests. And then seeing his own son's heart being used to bring the icon of sin to life after, you know, Fallon betrayed his people and then obviously the hell priest betrayed everyone uh, to, uh, to get the power of the wraiths. The thing is though, these types of stories just aren't enough to be read from a codex entry. I mean, reading through them doesn't have the same depth or emphasis as to experience it with your own eyes. And I think that immersion is very important to tell a compelling story. The thing is though, the story doesn't have to be done as its full standalone game. It can be done as a future DLC for the next Doom game, let's just say we call the DLC The Gods of Argenta Part 1 and Part 2 or something like that. Or a much better way of handling it, which I, this is my favorite sort of I guess idea that I've come up with, is to use echoes or memories that the Slayer can interact with and experience it firsthand. And I've tried to look for like, you know, a very good example and I'm, I'm sure there is a better example. So if you have a better example, please let me know in the comments below. But a decent example that I can think of from the top of my head is from Fallout 4, uh, from the main story. So yes, there will be uh, spoilers in this. And it's where you go and take a part of Kellogg's brain into the uh, the dream uh, machine or dream sort of area. And then you get to go through Kellogg's experience of and basically experience his life uh, one fragment at a time. And I think that in the future Doom games, you can have these Argenta structures like, you know, like the Sentinel Crystal housing in Doom Eternal or these sort of podiums of the Slayer Testaments. These can be located in certain areas of Hell that were written by Valen himself. You know, these podiums and tablets could be imbued with ancient Argenta magic. And then these podiums could have ancient inscriptions that detail a story of Valen's survival in Hell. Or his history, the history of the Argenta, the Civil War, so on and so forth. And the way that it would work is that the player would walk up to it and interact with them. The same way how you interact with the uh, the runes or the, the rune housing in Doom Eternal. And then you see, you know, you're then placed in that part of history where you play as Commander Valen. And this is sort of like a similar mechanic that you can use from Cultist Base. Where we take control of the Revenant drone and then we have... A completely new UI and all new unique abilities which I mean yes they're not entirely unique because you can play as a revenant in battle mode but it's still unique within the story and I think the same can be done here so it could work as if you know the slayer touches these podiums you then see a flash of white and then you are then transported back in time and then you get to play as a Valen with some basic abilities like using the hammer you know, using some sort of uh, shotgun or something, I'm not sure. There's plenty of new ideas you can come up with. And then you can use the same method to implement a few chapters or a few memories going through the history of the Marauder. You know, the vision of his memory could begin with the Marauder waking up from his resurrection within the Divinity Machine and then being given his shield, super shotgun and, hand, and then his axe and then ordered by the Conmaker to hunt down the Slayer by any means. 
And then you can use the same mechanics from battle mode, again just like the Revenant drone, where the player goes through and destroys Night Sentinel warriors as the Marauder. I mean, I could go on and on, but I honestly feel that these sort of visions of the past are a much better way to telling stories than simply just writing it in codex entries. And it would really help with making the story more coherent. And most of all, really allow players to get immersed into the Doomverse. But, you know, just to be completely honest, the number one reason why I want to play as Valen is to keep playing with, um, well, just because of this. Son's curse has been lifted. And I atone for my sins. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. If you enjoy this video, then make sure to subscribe and like the video. It really helps with pushing my channel through the algorithm. And let me know in the comments below what you think of my idea on implementing different point of views and different characters while still keeping Doom about Doom Guy. And Hugo, if you do watch this, let me know what you think of this idea. Also, if you do like this idea, then I am available for hire, so if its software should get in touch with me, I'll happily provide you with my resume. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.